like 5000 likes to this video, we will implode more patriotic news. Thank you. Just in Clinton investigator found dead with bag overhead. One GOP operative who was investigating Hillary Clinton was found dead and it was stated that it was a suicide back in May. But, new evidence says something else about his death. Young conservatives reported that Peter W. Smith, 81, was found dead in a Minnesota hotel room with a bag tied over his head and an apparent suicide note by his side. In the note, Smith apologized to authorities in all capital letters and said that no foul play whatsoever was involved in his death. He went on to say that he was taking his own life because of a recent bad turn in health since January, 2017 and timing related to life insurance of $5 million expiring. However, even the local chief of police admitted that committing suicide by tying a bag over one's head is quite unusual. Last year, Smith had assembled a team and tried to obtain Hillary's 30,000 missing emails from Russian hackers, who he was convinced had the documents. He said that his team had found five hacker groups, two of which were Russian, that had the emails. Smith never believed that Hillary had only deleted the emails because they were personal, saying that he thought they were related to her official duties. He's been a thorn in the side of the Clinton family for years as he played a major role in exposing the Troopergate allegations about Bill Clinton's sex life. Smith can be added to the Clinton's lengthy body count as yet another person who died mysteriously just before potentially exposing them. What do you think about this? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section. What do you think of this? Share your opinion. Breaking government is making their final decision about George Soros, he is not gonna like IT. The fake philanthropist George Soros creates a mess all over the world. But recently he is not doing so well. His puppet installments from everywhere are losing massively by the conservative institutions. Everyone in the United States knows about his evil deeds. It looks like now, one African country is issuing a lawsuit against him for interfering with their politics. Fox News reported that, a $10 billion suit against George Soros alleges the recognized humanitarian of interfering with the state policies of a poor African country for his own personal gain, a charge the billionaire's critics say demonstrates his longtime modus operandi. The 86-year-old entrepreneur, who manages a web of international nonprofits along with his substantial financial empire, managed, through the government of Guinea to freeze Israeli company BSG resources out of the West African nation's lucrative iron on ore mining deals, based on the suit filed a month ago in New York federal court by BSG resources. BSGR alleges in court papers, source was motivated solely by malice, as there was no economic interest he had in Guinea. This was a great move because source was involved in massive scandals all over the world. The good thing is that people recognize his evil ways and they react. What do you think of this? Share your Trump sends three words to John McCain after he screwed America like traitor Benedict Arnold. Things in Congress are pretty messed up. The latest events prove this. This is happening when your personal hate is bigger than the love towards your fellow countrymen. I guess you already know that I am talking about John McCain. John McCain hates President Trump so much that he betrayed the American people by siding with the lying Democratic criminals. His move was one of the most cowardly moves even in Congress. Right now, Trump, his colleagues, and the American people are so angry at him that say how he needs to go back to Arizona and stay there forever. Mad World News reminds us how for seven years the American people were the ones who suffered and even died thanks to Obamacare. McCain ignored this fact and after this morning when the Republicans under the order of the president tried one more time to get to 50 votes to begin the process of repealing Obamacare he did the unbelievable. He failed all of the Republicans who had campaigned on repealing Obamacare and who promised better future. Obamacare thanks to this man is not a history. His vote was needed the most, he broke seven years of promises with one word. McCain said no. Here is how he stabbed every American in the back and how made people like Nancy Pelosi and Chit Schumer praise him, 
This vote cast by McCain carries out pain to the middle class and it is sad that there are only a few voices besides Trump that actually still care for the American middle class. In case Obamacare was repealed, the tax relief would happen. If Obamacare is gone, it frees up millions of dollars that will go back to the American people in the form of lower taxes. But no, they refuse to. Regarding this case, President Trump tweeted, Let Obamacare implode. These are the three words that every single person needs to remember. Wonder why? Well, because when Obamacare implodes many Americans will suffer and fortunately they will put the blame on McCain and the Democrats. We clearly see that President Trump did not fail us, but it was the three Republicans and 48 Democrats in Congress to do so. What do you think of this? Share your opinion. Ben Carson exposes $500 billion in government waste. Guess who's going down for it? The liberal mainstream media and the Democrats have been criticizing every single member of the Trump administration so far. One of the main targets that liberals have zeroed in on is the new Housing and Urban Development Secretary, Ben Carson. Critiques of Trump's pick stated that Ben Carson is merely a surgeon with no government experience, and therefore isn't suited for the position. But Carson just proved all of them wrong with this recent discovery that Obama's former HUD secretary, Julian Castro, mysteriously missed. From the Daily Wire, President Trump picked Carson to head the Department of Housing and Urban Development, whose budget grew by leaps and bounds under Barack Obama. In one of his first acts as HUD secretary, Carson ordered an audit of the agency. What he found was staggering $520 billion in bookkeeping errors. The total amounts of errors corrected in HUD's notes and consolidated financial statements were $516.4 billion and $3.4 billion, respectively, the auditors wrote. So Ben Carson was mocked by liberals for being unqualified, yet the supposedly qualified Julian Castro created half a trillion dollars in errors. These bookkeeping errors are likely intentional embezzlement by Democrats who were emboldened to do so under Obama. Now that their crime spree is over, the Democrats are kicking and screaming because this find suggests there are many more government agencies in need of an audit. Someone is going to pay for this massive waste of taxpayer dollars, the only question is how high does it go? Where was the money embezzled to? Hopefully, we can pin the tail on a very important donkey. Outsiders like Trump and Carson prove that because they are not a part of the swamp, they are just the people we need to keep the government in check. Just think, if Hillary Clinton had won, we never would have known this was happening. What do you think of this? Share your opinion. Thray Gowdy shocks Congress, I don't give a damn whose careers are ruined. We love Thray. Truth always wins. We are in awe of this man. It's refreshing to our hearts that America has Thray and several other representatives who live and work within the rule of law. Stemming from his work and brave convictions certainly more and more reps in the House will follow suit. And as that occurs, every time we see an elected official take a stand for morality and logic we will describe those events, in honor of Thray, as moments of Gaudi mode activation. Thray Gaudi talks about Benghazi and Hillary Clinton emails. Republicans drop bomb on Hillary Clinton and Loretta Lynch happening now. Some Republican lawmakers decided to call on the Justice Department to appoint a second special counsel right next to Robert Mueller to investigate the controversial 2016 campaign of Hillary Clinton and the relationship with Obama's White House. Fox News reported that House Judiciary Committee Chairman Bob Goodlett, RVA, and various GOP committee colleagues sent a letter to Attorney General Jeff Sessions and Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein warning that these questions cannot be allowed to die on the vine amid the Russia probe firestorm. The American public has a right to know the facts, all of them, surrounding the election and its aftermath, they wrote. We urge you to appoint a second special counsel to ensure these troubling, unanswered questions are not relegated to the dustbin of history.
the GOP congressmen are calling for an entirely separate special counsel probe from the one Robert Mueller is leading into Russian meddling in the 2016 election and possible coordination with Trump associates. They are arguing that this is necessary because numerous unanswered questions remain from the 2016 campaign cycle that has been pushed aside amid the intense Russia focus. Their extensive, 14-point request for what a second special counsel should cover includes allegations that former Attorney General Loretta Lynch instructed then-FBI Director James Comey to downplay the nature of the Clinton email probe the FBI and Dodge's decisions in the course of the email probe, including controversial immunity, deals with Clinton aide Cheryl Mills and others the State Department's involvement in deciding which Clinton emails to make public disclosures in WikiLeaks released emails regarding the Clinton Foundation and, according to the letter, its potentially unlawful international dealings connections between Clinton officials and foreign entities including Russia and Ukraine revelations and hacked Democratic National Committee emails about inappropriate coordination between the DNC and Clinton campaign against Bernie Sanders' Democratic primary campaign the unmasking of Americans and in intelligence documents and potentially related leaks of classified information Comey's admitted leak of details of his conversations with President Trump the FBI's reliance on on controversial firm Fusion GPS, which was involved in the questionable anti-Trump dossier, our call for a special counsel is not made lightly, we have no interest in engendering more bad feelings and less confidence in the process or governmental institutions by the American people. Rather, our call is made on their behalf. It is meant to determine whether the criminal prosecution of any individual is warranted based on the solemn obligation to follow the facts wherever they lead and applying the law to those facts. What do you think of this? Share your